Good afternoon viewers, welcome back to another edition of the Regional Review. My name is Enzo Amuela, the correspondent for Namibia Media Holdings in the Central North. Before we continue into our show today, today is World Kidney Day. This day raises awareness of what the kidney can do and what it cannot do when it doesn't function properly. Please do stay tuned. Welcome back from our daily ad viewers. First up in our news, the governor of Ochozupa region met with recognized traditional authorities in the region. This is part of the annual consultative meetings to discuss common issues concerning uh, uh, communities within the region of Ochozupa region. James Werika also urged the traditional authority leaders to work closely together and to ensure that services and uh, disputes are solved in the communities. I have five applications from five different traditional authorities in the Shogonjupa region that are seeking recognition as traditional authorities. That is in addition to yourselves already who are recognized in your various capacities, in your various areas of jurisdiction and operating in the region of Shogonjupa. So I saw it fit as well that you as key stakeholders, we need to discuss and pave a way forward. We need to discuss on the aspects of inclusive governance where participatory governance is the order of the day. Where we consult on every action to be taken. We consult on government programs to be executed. You might be aware that a lot of OMAS throughout government are busy reviewing their annual and strategic plans. The budget of our government have already been tabled by the Honorable Minister of Finance and it will go into debate in Parliament. As regions, as traditional authorities, we need to project ourselves in such a way that we can have meaningful impact through the necessary means that our ways can be heard as far as debates are concerned, as far as considerations are concerned. Though the budget is already tabled, it is yet to be gazetted and to be promulgated into, into what you call the appropriation bill. So this is important that such consultations must happen early at the beginning of the year. I want to talk strongly. The cooperation between traditional authorities in regions and in Namibia. The government of the Republic of Namibia have 52 recognized traditional authorities in the Republic of Namibia. And on top of that, there are the unrecognized traditional authorities that are operating within their various communities as of how they identify themselves within their communities. Them being part and parcel of the Republic of Namibia, we also consult. Because every consultation is key in decision making. The cooperation between traditional authority is a cause of concern. Whereby you find traditional authorities in one region but people do not coexist and try to exchange ideas and leadership aspects that can solve problems. We are serving the same community. Thus, we need to be consulting and be on the same page and work together. But if we are not harmonized at all levels, we will never be able to achieve our objectives on time. Well, it is indeed a privilege to see the leadership of uh, the Ochozupa Regional Council meeting with all these relevant stakeholders to ensure that uh, the communities are really served and that development takes place in the community, within the region. Next up in our news.
the governor of Otonzuba region, James Werika, led a delegation of regional councillors, Senator Red and uh, the chief regional officer, Ms. Agatha Mueti, for an urgent meeting with Nampawa over the combat settlement electrification program. This, this uh, comes after the army's threat by the power utility to, to disconnect power supply to the settlement to recover a 29 million debt owed to them. Next up in our news, a 25-year-old farmer who farms around the area of Rotfontein plants 50,000 dry land maize on a 330-hectare land in his area. He believes that the youth should get involved in more of uh, farming and as well as the Namibian cooperatives to ensure that there are loans available for agriculture agriculture production. And he also believes that technology should definitely usher the farmer, the farming industry. The leadership of Ochivarongo municipality held a stakeholder engagement on the 2nd of March 2022 to include their contributions for inclusion in the 2022-2023 budget. The, engage, the engagement, according to the municipality's chief executive officer, Moses Matiai, is to look at how the council can support post-COVID recovery and transform the way council services are delivered to ensure they are modern, effective, efficient and environmentally friendly. Much I added that local authorities face significant funding cuts to the budget over the recent years. And he said that this has been made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has left the council with a large budget shortfall, as well as hitting businesses and families hard. ...for the next five-year uh, operations. And uh, it was developed under the theme uh, together for a smart, vibrant, and sustainable Ochibarongo excellence. Why are we saying smart, vibrant, and sustainable? Because we are living in a global age. The world has evolved that uh, we are not operating in isolation. We have to adapt to all the involved uh, IT or information technology that is uh, currently uh, prominent within the world, within the service delivery when you look in the, in the world. So we also have to adapt to those uh, IT systems that will help us to, what, to deliver our services uh, effectively and efficiently. What is our mission? Our mission as a council is we exist to evolve into the world-class smart city and vibrant economic hub of service excellence and share prosperity. The constitution that gives us the mandate to exist up to a lot of uh, legislation, but the most important piece of legislation for our municipality to execute the mandate that was given to us emanates from the Local Authorities Act and specifically uh, section 82 and 83. 82 reference to our financial year, which stretched from the 1st of July up to the 30th of June of every year. So that's a set of uh, paid set in which we need to determine our budget. And then under section 83, it gives the council the mandate with certain guidelines from the minister um, to draft all the estimates for revenue and expenditure and of capital nature and then also approve that as council and then the tariffs is presented to the minister for approval and then gazetting uh, through the administration process. Must I speak louder? Okay, sorry. Um, you can hear me. Thank you. So that gives us the legal mandate. Why are we, or why can we, uh, why should we draft uh, a budget? Now a budget is basically a technical implementation of the municipality's five-year strategic plan. We just heard Frida Highlighting our plan, the plan was uh, drafted last year and concluded last year. 
Well, viewers, that brings us to the end of our new segment today. Now we head over to an interview with Tuli Pamwe Kadenango, who is a youth activist in Okakarara. Good afternoon, Namibia. I'm Tripa Mekadendango, a youth activist in Ogakarara constituency. I'm here to talk about the social issues uh, of the youth in Ogakarara. Uh, number one is the unemployment, which is very high in our constituency. Well, unemployment, as we know, unemployment contributes to other issues, the likes of alcohol and drugs abuse, as the constituency. Uh, is very high influ is very highly influenced uh, in using alcohol and drugs. Um, the other thing is 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 that uh, we see a high number of young members uh, involving into crimes, uh, likes of stealing, uh, stock theft, uh, crappings of phones or properties or money uh, and so on so uh, unemployment uh, in our great our great constituency lies at a percentage of 70 to 80 percent uh, which is uh, clear which clearly shows that uh, our our youth uh, needs jobs in our constituency uh, unemployment itself uh, is majorly caused by uh, by a high dropouts in our constituency. Well, that session clearly uh, taught us a lot, and the youth that were there picked up well on how we can we can we can move out of or we can maneuver away from unemployment. First, the constituency has the opportunity for crop protection. Looking on the soil, uh, uh, I don't know, to the agricultural experts, uh, the soil, that is loamy soil or clay soil that is in the constituency, which is good for agricultural pro um, products and so on. So it is high time for us, the youth, to grab the opportunity of crop production, or uh, which is which is one of the sectors that does not need uh, a lot of or much capital for the project to run. In that manner, I encourage our leaders to find ways to bring up to to bring our youth forward in different sectors. Thank you very much. Well, I wish. Tulipamwe, all the best with his youth activism in Okakarara, and I hope he definitely stands up for the youth in Okakarara. Now we'd head over to our weather report. Partly cloudy conditions are forecast for Okahanya today, with rain expected tomorrow where after skies will clear. At Ochivarongo, patchy clouds are expected today with showers tomorrow and on Sunday. Rain is forecast for Tumib and Grootfontein today and tomorrow, followed by cloud cover this weekend. A few clouds are expected at Okokarara today with showers tomorrow. On Saturday it will clear somewhat before building up on Sunday ahead of rain on Monday. Temperatures all over the central areas are in the low 30s.
Well, viewers, that brings us to the end of our show here today on the Regional Review. If you guys have anything newsworthy, do not hesitate to contact me at enzo at myzone.com.na.